Hi everyone, it's Professor Pimpton, and in this video we're going to finish up our discussion on basic trigonometric equations. So in the previous video we talked about how to solve linear trigonometric equations involving sine and cosine. We talked about how to solve equations involving a single trigonometric function, and also solving trigonometric equations using a calculator. In this video we're going to talk about how to solve trigonometric equations that are quadratic in form. So let's talk about solving trigonometric equations by factoring. Factoring is actually one of the most useful techniques in solving equations, and that's also true for solving trigonometric equations. The idea is to move all the terms to one side of the equation, factor, and then use what's called the zero product property to set each of the factors equal to zero, and then you can solve the resulting equations. So in example five, solve in a trigonometric equation by factoring. Solve the following trigonometric equations and find all solutions. Number one, the equation is the quantity, tangent squared of theta subtract four, that's one factor, times the other factor is two times cosine of theta plus one, and the product of the two factors is equal to zero. Well, this trigonometric equation has already been factored for us. We have a product of two factors, and the product is equal to zero. Using the zero product property, one of the factors must be zero. So if tangent squared of theta minus four times two cosine of theta plus one is equal to zero, that means tangent squared of theta minus four is equal to zero, or two times cosine of theta plus one is equal to zero. At least one of the factors must be zero. And so now we can solve the resulting equations. Tangent squared of theta subtract four equals zero, Remember, if we want to solve this type of equation, we need to get the tangent function by itself, tangent of theta by itself. So you need to isolate the tangent of theta by itself on one side of the equation. So add four to the right side of the equation. That way you get tangent squared of theta is equal to four. And now take the square root on both sides of the equation to get tangent of theta rather than tangent squared of theta. And remember the plus or minus on the other side of the equation because you're using a square root to cancel out a square power. So the square root of tangent squared of theta will be just tangent of theta. And the square root of four will be two, but you have to remember the plus or minus. So tangent of theta is equal to plus or minus two. So we have two equations here. We have tangent of theta is equal to two or tangent of theta is equal to negative two. On the other hand, we also have the factor two times cosine of theta plus one is also equal to zero. And so if we solve this equation by getting cosine of theta by itself on one side of the equation, we subtract one on both sides of the equation first, so we have two times cosine of theta is equal to negative one. Divide both sides of the equation by two to get cosine of theta by itself. And so cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. So we have this equation to solve as well. So if tangent of theta is equal to two, you can use the inverse tangent function to isolate the theta on one side of the equation. So you can cancel out the tangent function using the inverse tangent function. So if you take inverse tangent on both sides of the equation, inverse tangent of tangent of theta is just theta because tangent and inverse tangent are inverses of one another. But you also take the inverse tangent on the right side of the equation as well. So theta will be inverse tangent of two, which will give us inverse tangent of two is approximately 1.107 radians. Make sure your calculator's in radian mode. And so theta is equal to 1.107 radians, or it can also be written in general form as theta is 1.107 radians plus pi times k because the period of the tangent function is pi radians. So it's any multiple of pi plus 1.107 radians, where k is an integer. So this will give you angles theta that actually are in quadrants one or three because tangent of theta is equal to two. That means tangent is the positive value that only occurs in quadrants one or three. On the other hand, if you want to solve tangent of theta is equal to negative two, you can also use the inverse tangent function to solve for theta. So you do the same thing. You take the inverse tangent function on both sides of the equation. Inverse tangent of tangent of theta is just theta, but then inverse tangent of negative two will give us this. Inverse tangent of negative two is approximately negative 1.107 radians. And so the other general solution for when tangent of theta is equal to negative two would be theta is equal to negative 1.107 radians plus some multiple of pi radians, where k is an integer. So you can have theta as negative 1.107 plus pi times k, where k is an integer. That's where the angle theta is in quadrants two or four, because tangent was actually negative two. That's a negative value. Tangent is negative in quadrants two and four. So, so far the solutions are of the form theta is equal to 1.107 plus pi k, or theta is equal to negative 1.107 radians plus pi k, where k is an integer. However, we also have the equation cosine of theta must be equal to negative one half. Well, cosine is negative in quadrants two and three. And so we need to find out what are the angles in quadrants two or three where cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. Theta is equal to two pi divided by three. That's the angle in quadrant two where cosine is equal to negative one half. But you also can have any multiple of two pi as well added on to two pi over three radians. And so the general solution would be this. Theta is equal to two pi over three plus two pi times k where k is an integer. It's any multiple of two pi plus two pi over three radians. That's if the angle theta is in quadrant two. However, you can also have theta is in quadrant three for cosine of theta to be negative one half. Well, the other angle is equal to four pi over three radians. So theta can also be four pi over three radians plus any multiple of two pi radians. So theta can be four pi over three plus two pi k, 
where k is an integer. That's also the general solution to the equation where cosine of theta is equal to negative one half. So any value for the angle that solves this original equation, tangent squared of theta subtract four is one factor, times the other factor two times cosine of theta plus one, the product of the two factors is equal to zero, for one of the following general solutions. Theta is 1.107 plus pi k. Theta is negative 1.107 plus pi k. Theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k. Or theta is equal to 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. Let's try one more where we actually have to factor to solve the trigonometric equation. So number two, we're going to solve this equation. Four times sine of theta times cosine of theta plus three times cosine of theta is equal to zero. Notice that this equation has cosine of theta in common with both terms on the left side of the equation. So you can factor out cosine of theta on the left side of the equation. So four times sine of theta cosine of theta. If you factor out cosine of theta from the first term, you have a four times sine of theta left over. And if you factor out cosine of theta from the second term, which was three times cosine of theta, then you have a three left over from the second term. So in its factored form, you have cosine of theta times the factor four times sine of theta plus three. The product of these two factors must be equal to zero. And so using the zero product property, one of the factors must be zero. That means cosine of theta must be zero, or the other factor, four times sine of theta plus three is equal to zero. Well, we have two equations that we need to solve now. Cosine of theta equals zero, or the other equation, if you get sine of theta by itself, to make sure it's a basic trigonometric equation, sine of theta will be equal to negative three fourths. So let's solve cosine of theta equals zero first. So this means what angles is cosine zero? Well, cosine of theta will be zero if the angle is pi over two or is equal to three pi over two. So the general solution to the equation cosine of theta equals zero will be this. Theta is pi over two plus two pi k, where k is an integer, or it can also be theta is equal to three pi over two plus two pi k, where k is an integer. So it can be some multiple of two pi plus pi over two or some multiple of two pi plus three pi over two. So that solves the equation cosine of theta equals zero. Any angle of this form will actually be a solution to the equation. However, we also have the equation sine of theta is equal to negative three fourths to solve. So sine of theta is equal to negative three fourths. Notice that sine is actually a negative value that only occurs in quadrants three and four. So our angle theta must be in quadrants three or quadrant four. And so to solve this equation, notice that this value negative three fourths is not part of the unit circle. So you actually have to use the inverse sine function to actually solve for theta. So use inverse sine on both sides of the equation inverse sine of sine of theta. The inverse sine and sine are inverses one another, so you just get theta back. And then you take the inverse sine on the right side of the equation and you have inverse sine of negative three fourths, which will be inverse sine of negative three fourths is approximately negative 0.8481 radians. Make sure your calculator is in radian mode. So this is the angle theta if it's actually in quadrant four. So this value, negative 0.8481 radians, is actually an angle that's in quadrant four. Remember, the inverse sine function only exists if the angle theta is in quadrants one or four. And so the value that's returned is actually an angle that's in quadrant four. So one of the general solutions to the equation sine of theta is equal to negative three fourths will be this. It'll be theta is equal to negative 0.8481 plus some multiple of two pi. So plus two pi k, where k is an integer. And then keep in mind, you also have an angle that's actually in quadrant three, where the sine of theta is equal to negative three fourths, will be theta is equal to negative 2.2935 radians, and then also add on some multiple of two pi. So the general solution would be, for the angle that's in quadrant three, will be theta is equal to negative 2.2935 plus two pi k, where k is an integer. Any angle of the form, theta is equal to pi over two plus two pi k, or theta is equal to three pi over two plus two pi k, or theta is equal to negative 0.8481 plus two pi k, or theta is equal to negative 2.2935 plus two pi k, where k is an integer in any of those four forms, will actually be a solution to the equation four times sine of theta times cosine of theta plus three times cosine of theta is equal to zero. So let's finish up this video with example six. Solving a trigonometric equation of quadratic type. Solve the following quadratic equations and find all solutions. Number one, two times cosine squared of theta subtract cosine of theta subtract one is equal to zero. Notice that all the terms are on one side of the equation, and so the other side of the equation is equal to zero. So one thing to notice is that the entire equation involves the function cosine of theta. But the first term is cosine of theta squared. The second term is just cosine of theta. So it looks like if you let u be equal to cosine of theta, then the equation two times cosine squared of theta subtract cosine of theta subtract one equals zero will become two times u squared subtract u subtract one equals zero if you let u be equal to cosine of theta. And so now you have what's called a quadratic equation. So this is what's called a trigonometric equation of quadratic type. 
It's an equation that involves a trigonometric function, but if you make a replacement or a substitution, it actually becomes a quadratic equation. And so now we're going to solve this quadratic equation. 2u squared subtract u minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, 2u squared subtract u minus 1 equals 0. You actually can factor this to solve the quadratic equation. So 2u squared subtract u minus 1 equals 0. You can factor it using the AC method or trial and error. You have 2u plus 1 is one of the factors, and the other factor is u subtract 1. And the product of the two factors is equal to the right side of the equation which was zero. And so if you have a product of two factors that are equal to zero, one of the factors, at least one of the factors, must be zero. So 2u plus 1 is equal to zero, or the other factor, u subtract 1 equals zero. So you solve each of the resulting equations. That means u is equal to negative 1 half for the first equation, or u equals 1 for the second equation. Well, we weren't solving a quadratic equation. We weren't solving for u. We were trying to solve the trigonometric equation, and we are trying to find out what is the solutions in terms of theta. So now let's change the problem back in terms of trigonometric equations. We have u is equal to negative 1 half. Well, we called u cosine of theta. So that means cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half, or we also had u is equal to 1. Well, that means cosine of theta is equal to 1 in terms of trigonometric equations. So now we need to solve the trigonometric equations cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half, and also cosine of theta is equal to 1. Well, let's talk about cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half first. So if cosine of theta is a negative value, that only occurs in quadrants 2 and 3. So let's find out what is the angle theta that's in quadrant 2 where cosine of theta is negative 1 half. Well, the angle would be theta is 2 pi over 3. So you can have theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer. So that's the angle that's in quadrant 2, where cosine of theta is negative 1 half. Now let's find out what is the angle in quadrant 3, where cosine of theta is negative 1 half. Well, that angle would be 4 pi over 3. So theta can be 4 pi over 3 plus some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, where cosine of theta will be negative 1 half. That's actually in quadrant 4. So this gives you the general solution to the equation cosine of theta is equal to negative 1 half, but we also have to solve the equation cosine of theta is equal to 1. Well, if cosine of theta is equal to 1, the only angle where cosine is equal to 1 is the angle 0. So theta can be 0 radians plus, again, some multiple of 2 pi. So theta can be 0 plus 2 pi k, where k is an integer, or that's just theta is equal to 2 pi k, where k is an integer. So you have solutions of the form theta is equal to 2 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, theta is 4 pi over 3 plus 2 pi k, or theta is equal to 2 pi k. In all three cases, k is an integer. Any angle of those three different forms will be a solution to the equation 2 times cosine squared of theta, subtract cosine of theta, subtract 1 is equal to 0. Let's try one more. Number 2, let's solve the equation 2 times sine squared of theta plus 5 times sine of theta, subtract 12 is equal to 0. So notice you have sine squared of theta in the first term and you have just sine of theta in the second term. So it looks like we can change this to be a quadratic equation again. So this is a trigonometric equation that's quadratic type. So let u be sine of theta, then the equation 2 times sine squared of theta plus 5 times sine of theta subtract 12 equals 0 will now become 2 times u squared because we're letting sine of theta be u. So it will be 2u squared for the first term plus 5 times u, so 5u for the second term, subtract 12, that will just stay the same, and the right side of the equation is still 0. So now we have a quadratic equation to solve. We have 2u squared plus 5u subtract 12 is equal to 0. Let's solve this quadratic equation by factoring again using the AC method. So we want to find what are the two factors where you have 2u squared plus 5u subtract 12 on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation is 0. Well, it will factor as 2u subtract 3 is one of the factors and the other factor is u plus 4. And so if you multiply these two factors and you get 0, that means one of the factors must be 0. At least one of the factors must be 0. So 2u minus 3 is equal to 0 or u plus 4 is equal to 0. Now you can solve each of these resulting equations for u. So if 2u minus 3 is equal to 0, that means u is equal to 3 over 2, or 3 halves. And if u plus 4 is equal to 0, that means u is equal to negative 4. Well, again, we're not solving for the equation for u. We were solving the original equation in terms of theta because it was a trigonometric equation involving theta. So we have equations to solve involving the sine function. We have sine of theta is equal to 3 halves because u is equal to sine of theta. So sine of theta is 3 halves. Well, sine is a positive value. It's positive 3 halves. That only occurs in quadrants 1 and 2. However, notice that the sine function can never be greater than 1. The sine function is always between the values of negative 1 and 1, including the endpoints for an output value. So this does not have any solutions. You can never have an output value for the sine function be 3 over 2 or 1.5. So this will not have any solutions for theta. However, we also have the other equation 
u equals negative 4, well that means sine of theta is equal to negative 4. Again, we don't have any solutions because the value for sine can never be outside the interval negative 1 to 1, including the endpoints. In other words, you can never have an output value that's negative 4 for the sine function. And so there are no solutions for this equation either. So in other words, there are no values of theta where it's 2 times sine squared of theta plus 5 times sine of theta subtract 12 equals 0 will ever be true. There is no solution to this equation because sine of theta will never be equal to 3 over 2 and sine of theta will never be equal to negative 4. So this finishes our video on more trigonometric equations. We talked about how to solve trigonometric equations by factoring, and we also talked about how to solve trigonometric equations that are quadratic in form. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about how to solve trigonometric equations using identities.